All right, how's it going, guys? I'm going to touch a little bit on air game here. Uh, basically, what you need for a certain stage of the game, what you need to shoot down specific types of UFOs, um, when you need upgrades, and pros and cons of going for laser cannons, and are laser cannons even necessary. So we'll start off with March. In March, you're only using avalanche missiles, and by the way, you do need to rename all of your planes. Each time a renamed plane shoots something down, that plane gets 3% aim and 1% damage, apparently. And that's all you need for March. You just need avalanche missiles. Typically, two avalanche missile interceptions will take out a scout. Now, keep in mind, as far as crash sites go, the more overkill damage you have, the less likelihood of getting a mission. And avalanche missiles also have a pretty high chance to crit, so sometimes you could be overkilling for quite a high amount, and Stingrays is definitely a, is pretty much a uh, better bet if you want a mission. That said, it's gonna take you roughly two shots with an avalanche missile to take out a scout, whereas it's gonna take you four shots with a Stingray missile to take out a scout. So, it's just, you can't really be intercepting with Stingrays, and Stingrays are going to be used for fighters. Now, as you transition into April, so let's say you look at your council report, and you see how it says 20 days. When it says two days left, you're going to want to buy some planes. So your plane will be less than a day away from showing up at the very beginning of the next month. Ideally, you'd do that for something like April or maybe later parts of the game, but that upkeep cost isn't going to be so important. You're more so going to be buying planes because you need a plane right now in the later parts of the game. But just keep that in mind as you're transitioning to April. That's a good way to get more planes at the start of April. And you're going to want five or six at the start of April, by the way. So when you get into April, you're going to need two of them. Switch them to Stingrays. Switch two of them to Stingrays, and you're going to want four interceptors on avalanche missiles and you're going to be keeping that up until june by the way so if you see a fighter two avalanche two stingray missile interceptions will usually take it down but you'll probably need a third to guarantee it but you don't see the fighters too often and you're at least guaranteed one fighter in april i'll tell you that much but if you see a raider Avalanche missiles are pretty much the same as Stingrays, although some people say they're slightly better than Stingrays. Either which way, they're pretty much the same as far as damage output goes, but you're going to want to get the killing blow with the Stingray interception so you can potentially have a higher chance to get a mission. Doesn't mean you can't get a mission with an Avalanche missile killing blow, it's just more likely. So you could do three Stingrays, three... Um, avalanche missiles, but you definitely want the avalanche missiles against scouts. Now, you don't see destroyers until June, by the way. So, as soon as you get to June, you're going to need f at least four or five Stingray interceptions with one avalanche missile interception. And to actually shoot down a destroyer successfully, you're going to need five to six Stingray missile interceptions. To shoot down a raider successfully, you're going to need I would say minimum three. You'd have to be insanely lucky to shoot it down in two, but it's usually going to take you around four interceptions to guarantee shooting down a a raider and two interceptions of avalanche missiles to shoot down a scout. Okay, so now the reason why the air game is so damn important. I'm trying to get a UFO mission, by the way, because there's a trick I want to show you. The reason why it's so important is because of the missions. The missions yield so much experience. They're roughly a third to half of your missions in a given month. Now, if you're not shooting anything down, you're missing out on a lot of missions. So let's you typically need eight interceptors to cover one continent. And by the way, I would strongly recommend getting 
air superiority as soon as possible. A lot of people like to start in the U.S. just so they can get that, well, not so U.S., but North America, one of these North America countries, so they can get the North America continent bonus as soon as possible. But you could just as easily start in France, launch a satellite in Russia, and then get two uplinks and go ahead and finish up and get North America. Like if I started in France, I would want to launch my satellite in Russia for the HP bonus, but I would then take over North America, then I'd finish Europe. Because that bonus is just, it's just so much. I don't have satellites. Oh, that's a good point. <laughs> that is a very good point. I don't have satellites right here. So let me find a different save. Uh, let's see. Okay, so... Basically, if you intercept a raider or a scout... If you intercept a raider or a scout... And let's say three planes or damage for 20 days. Just, just buy another plane. Swap that plane out to a continent where you have no, no satellites on. And just leave that plane there until it's fully repaired. And just buy new planes so you can guarantee the shooting down of the next UFO that you see. Like I said... You're going to want to have four planes ready to go to pretty much guarantee shooting down a raider. You don't want to skip these UFO missions or just interceptions at all. It's, it's very important. That said, if you're just being crushed in air game, that typically happens around July if you have nothing. You're going to be skipping scouts. You're going to be skipping raiders. And half the time, I'd say roughly around half the time when you skip a UFO like that that's not scanning, it's going to send a scanner in its place. So that's one of the reasons why you don't want to be skipping anything. Anything at all. Not to mention, I believe they help them out in resources and research. I don't know how true that is. I'm pretty sure it's just the landers, though. Anyways, you want to shoot everything down. And to deal with that, I like to just buy near, buy more planes. Just just simply buy more. Let's say damage, damage, damage. Swap those out. Um, buy more. Sell stuff. There's a lot of things that you can sell, and I'll talk about that. I'll talk about that next. So let's say I have Europe and I have North America. I'm probably going to have around 14, 12 planes, something like that. For me, in most of my campaigns, I usually take over. I usually take over my starting co continent, and I'll whatever that might be. It's, and then I'll take over North America and all of Asia by July. For me, I don't like to do laser cannons because I feel like it costs too much and it restricts me too much in the ground game and restricts me too much towards what I'm pursuing. For example, if I want to pursue capturing, I have to dump 400 currency into getting two arc throwers and a containment facility up. So I just don't really have that currency, and I like to have workshops in June by June. So when I buy carapace armor, I have the reduction. So there's a lot of stuff that I'm using my currency for, and I feel like laser cannons just... They just... They cost too much, man. They cost way too much. Besides, if I'm covering all of North America, all of Europe, and all of Asia, and I have all of this by July, mid-July, late July, and I... That's a lot of planes. You're talking 20 planes, roughly. 24 planes to protect all of that. So what do I do? The most important thing is to impact my air game in a situation like that is going to be foundry projects. I'm going to want wingtip sparrowhawks and armored fighters as quickly as possible because that will make the biggest difference in the air game. Never mind improved avionics, the 10% um, aim percentage or countermeasures, 15% dodge. Wingtip sparrowhawks and armored fighters will make the biggest difference. And when I'm covering that many, and you want to, you want to have as much like coverage 
as quickly as possible. It also means you get more landed larges if you have more satellite coverage. There's not so many countries that they can land those landed transports and landed harvesters on that you can't see. So that's another thing why satellite coverage is super important. But in a playthrough where an Asian country did not leave and I didn't get terror missions in Asia, I could take over all of Asia by July. I could have three continents taken over by July. And then I like to spam those foundry projects. So if I had armored fighters, wingtip, and countermeasures, and improved avionics, that would tide me over in the air game all the way until December, pretty much. Because that's when they start to send really, really strong fighters and destroyers that do too much damage. So at that stage of the game, you're not only going to need penetrator weapons, you're going to need some sort of weaponry. That's either going to be laser cannons or it's going to be coil guns. For me, I feel like coil guns with Phoenix cannons, well, the coil gun foundry project and Phoenix cannons as the weapon is better when I'm covering so many continents. Now, laser cannons with super capacitors is pretty good. I mean, it's, it's better than coil guns, but that's a huge currency sink. And super capacitors is crazy expensive. Now, you could just have a laser cannon, never mind super capacitor foundry project. And you do pretty well. You'll do pretty well when you get to December. But really, though, if you're having trouble and you can't get foundry projects, get those dodge, get those modules as soon as possible. Not necessarily dodge modules, but aim modules. Those are those help out a lot. I typically get those around August to September. Now, the bottom line here is you need something. You need something by July and August because you're going to be getting too many destroyers to do very much. And if you have nothing, you're only going to be intercepting fighters and destroyers pretty much. And you're going to be you're going to be skipping a lot of raiders and scouts and you're going to be consequently getting fighters and even more destroyers sent in their place. But usually it's worth the gamble to just skip them if your air game is getting crushed that badly. Even if I have 24 interceptors covering all of Asia and all of Europe and all of North America. That's, uh, I'm barely hanging on. You need something by July, late July to August. If you don't get something, you're going to lose satellites and you're going to lose, you're going to lose planes maybe. Well, you shouldn't lose planes. The next benchmark is December, because that's when they get better better destroyers and better fighters. So at that stage, you're definitely going to want to be using modules. Now, you could rush modules before foundry projects. And if you did lasers, you could potentially, and you're also then rushing mechs, you would then be getting the research that you need to then get aim modules. So... Stuff to keep in mind, stuff to consider. Bottom line is do not neglect air game. That is perhaps one of the most important things. Those missions, they're so important. Don't feel bad about selling a bunch of Illyrium or a bunch of spaceship parts to buy more planes. Because if you intercept a raider, shoot it down, you're getting at least 200 currency through that so you can buy another plane. Sounds good to me, man. I, I spend... I get, let's say, three damaged planes, I can buy another, and I get this mission for a bunch of currency, or a bunch, I get this mission for a bunch of experience for the soldiers. That's, that's too important to pass up. So, and last but not least, we're going to show the interception trick. So, you intercept a... A UFO. I'm just not even going to shoot at it. We're going to abort. Now, once I hit leave report, hit escape immediately. Then click mission control. Now you can either hit spacebar. I hit spacebar there. Or, oops, I can try and click the UFO mission. Now, that plane has already reached the... the... Um, headquarters right 
So you literally have three seconds, four seconds of time to take advantage of this. That allows you to intercept faster. Now, I didn't actually show you that faster interception since the window is so small. So I'm going to board immediately. Now, I hit spacebar there. Now, you see how I didn't take any damage with this plane right here? He's currently flying back. If I'm f dealing with a fighter, one of the tw one of the tricks is let's say I shoot one shot. No, let's say let's say I'm dealing with a fighter. I have four damage planes and I have two stingray interceptions only. So let's say I send up a stingray interception and I hit him. My shot goes out into the air and it hits him and he shoots and he misses me. I want to abort right before right before another shot goes out from that UFO. And because I only have two Stingray interceptions, what I want to do is maximize the time that I can fight with those two planes. So never mind refueling time. I have roughly 10 or 12 hours to intercept a scanner. Any scanner, you have roughly around 10 hours to intercept it. So don't feel bad about cheating and doing this. So this is the exact same plane that took no damage. And this is what you this is what you want to do when you're dealing with with uh, scanning ships and you don't have enough interceptors. That that exact same plane is going right back out because it took zero damage. But here's what you want to be doing for everything else that's not a scanner. Although I wouldn't use that uh, bypassing the refueling trick for that. Although you could, but it's more of a cheater thing to do. For the scanners, you have so much time that it just it's it's irrelevant. So, see so yeah, how this is flying back. I'm gonna have a second plane going towards it while that one's flying back. That saves you a lot of time. Now, when when UFOs are burning, they like to fly away. See how he's burning right there? He's gonna. I might not even be able to intercept him despite using this trick. And this is the whole point of this trick, is so you can actually catch them more like more often than not. I wonder if I wonder if I can intercept him right now. Now he's above headquarters, so I probably will. But a lot of the time, they just fly away, and there's nothing you can do about it. Z, it's like you might get that last interception. Maybe you just might get that interception once they reach half HP. When you see the explosions are at half HP, and they only try to fly away once they reach half HP. So, if you get more than one interception when that UFO is at half HP, you should feel really good about yourself because that's really rare. A lot of the time, I'd say at least half the time, they fly away. Maybe slightly less than half the time if you use this trick to save you a tiny amount of time. Instead of waiting for your plane to fly back to headquarters and then sending a plane out. And the only way you can do that is if you use the escape method. And then click mission control and hit spacebar really quick. Or click mission control and click the UFO mission as quickly as possible. But spacebar is faster. Anyways, I think that's, uh, that just about covers it. Um, I hope this helped, guys. Whether you like laser cannons, whether you like founder projects, to each their own. Like I said, the most there's two benchmarks of time that you have to do something for air game, and that's July to August and December. All right, take it easy, guys.